So our blade is finished, and now we have to work on the handle. Um, we've got our scales here um, that I'm going to use. I've decided to go with Apple. Uh, this is the Eastern Apple. Uh, I got them on eBay. They are very inexpensive, maybe $3. Um, and I like them quite a bit. I think they're, I, I like the color a lot. I think the color is very nice. It's simple, but um, tasteful as well. Um, they have been stabilized. I sent them to uh, KNG Supplies, Knife and Gun Finishing Supplies. Um, they're somewhat local here in Arizona. Um, I really like the job that they did um, stabilizing these scales and um, all my other wood. I used to be um, on the, the side of the argument that uh, I like natural, only natural, and I would refuse to do anything stabilized. Um, but as time went on, uh, it became more important to have um, as good as as good of performance as I can get. And you can't even tell that they're stabilized. It doesn't change the color. It makes it easier to finish. It, it increases the durability of the wood. And so there's really no reason not to do it. So now everything is stabilized. And so uh, the first step is to find the book match um, if it's not already found and just sort of label it um, as that's the outside that you want. Now whenever you're dealing with book match you don't want to sand down that this side. If you have to thin it, thin it from the bottom otherwise the more you sand this down the more it's going to deviate from the match pattern and you don't want that. So when you've got those marked, you have to decide which end you want to be the front. And I'm going to pick this end. It's kind of a hard choice on these. I mean, they're both pretty similar. So something like this, you could just kind of guess randomly or pick randomly, it doesn't really matter. And so what we're gonna do is we want these to be almost perfectly flat with each other. And so to do that, we're going to just put them on here. Careful, be careful to put even pressure. If you put too much pressure, it could go like this and then you have a flat here and then a flat here. Sometimes it's even subtle, but it, it'll still make a big difference um, because the consequences are not so subtle. Um, now, we've talked before that these belts flap, which means that they come up, they're a little raised, they're going to round over this area here. Well, that's okay because we've decided that this is our front and this is going to be our back. And the tank will not come all the way back here. And when we cut this off, we'll have cut off the rounded part. And now this is flat on our flat tank. So I'm going to do that. Um, got a good flat there's a couple of things you can do you can take a pencil and you can mark all over there touch it lightly and then see where it sanded that off if it sands off the whole area evenly you know you've got a good flat another way is if you've got both you can take it and you can hold it up to the light and if there are any gaps which there are here because it's been rounded over but not over here, then you can t then you can tell that it's not flat. 
So once you've got it flat, take a little bit of super glue. I like Gorilla brand. Um, and put two very small dobs. One up towards the front and one towards the back. It doesn't take much at all. Then, I'm going to glue these pieces together and I'm going to line them up as well as I can. Then I'm just going to clamp them and I'm going to leave these alone for at least a half an hour. We've got our scales glued up here. We've got our scales glued up here. Here's our front. Don't need that mark anymore. Sometimes I'll draw arrows to indicate the front. Here's our sketch we made a while back. So, um, remember I said we'd save this to the end, and this is why. So, we have these lines here indicating where our, our pins been drilled and so now I'm going to overlay the block so it fits over the design and I'm gonna line up this front here with this because this is on the knife where we want the scales to come up to so that's going to come up to that maybe a millimeter in front and then we also have this line here that indicates where we want the curve of this front to terminate on the edges of the tank so that it's even. So I'm going to put that up there. I'm going to line up my ruler and I'm just going to draw these same lines that I just drew have these lines here. So now what I'm going to do is, so here's roughly our center. We can just like that. Now, move this sketch here and we can just put this up on here and round that out. And I'll also round out all the other sides so our two pieces are now identical. Um, and that'll help us line up the scales um, on the knife when we glue them on.
now you check it against your pattern and um, the nice thing is um, if you have a weird curve like here is um, so say I have it like this and it touches here and it touches here but it's too fat here still I can just move it down here and adjust it how I need it to be um, so it looks good there's no need to bring it to any finer grit um, as long as it's all even it feels like one piece of wood um, voila it's simple lightly sand these uh, glue spots off um, and that's I've taken our scales and I've clamped them uh, between this piece of steel it's three quarter inch by I don't know it looks about quarter inch or three eighths inch um, and I've lined them up so they're even and because we sanded our scales to be identical it was pretty easy to do just by feeling it um, you can look down it and see that this is even um, so I'm going to put this in the vise and we're going to round this over and get this all finished and pretty so when we glue it on the knife we're not uh, messing up the steel I'm trying to get this looking good it'll already be finished let's see if you guys can see okay perfect um, I've got this long piece of sandpaper I bought um, I think it's J weight 50 grit it's a little stiffer than I like um, and it comes in a long roll um, and I'm going to use this to shape this out and then I'm going to switch to um, the our sanding strips that we same ones that we use to sand the blade and then I've got them they go up into higher grits um, make sure you wear a respirator it is just a little bit of sawdust but especially if you use exotic stuff coca bolo that kind of stuff any sawdust is bad for you and especially stabilized wood you have those chemicals in there um, you may not think it's that bad but it's still going to affect your health and it's not difficult to wear a respirator um, just do it
There, I've got it sanded just about to the center edge of this. I'm going to save a little bit to leave some to be taken off when we switch to the 220 grit um, strips. Got it sanded to the edge, but 220 is quite a jump from 50. So I might go over it just a couple of times um, just to make sure I got those deeper marks out. So that one was 320. Now I'm going to do 400, then 800, um, 1200, 1500, 2000. It should be pretty obvious if you left uh, any of the deeper scratches behind, especially when you get up to 2,000. Now we go over to our buffing machine. Uh, be very careful with these. They can be very dangerous. These soft wheels spin very fast, and if you if they grab your piece wrong, um, well, I guess grabbing it in anyway is not good. Um, it's going to spin back and it's going to hit you, probably straight in the face. So be careful with this. Always pay attention to the way your wheel's spinning. It's spinning this way, put your piece down here. If you do it here, you're going to get hurt. Um, this is just a soft cloth wheel, white rouge. Um, we're just going to buff up and polish these here so you can take this off. Um, do you want to wear a face shield for this just in case um, you don't want to if something does happen you don't want to get hurt
just very lightly. So at first I'm just going to focus on this bottom edge here. So I'm going to have the contact in there. And then I'm going to push it down more and get it up here. And then I'll go just kind of all over to even it out. There we go. Pretty nice color, I think. Um, if you don't have a buffer, uh, this is actually just a bench grinder that I took the wheels off and put a buffing wheel on. It's about 30 bucks. A bonafide buffer. They actually come out further so you have more workspace. Um, but you can get uh, smaller buffing wheels that will go on a drill um, or on the drill press. Uh, and they even make really small ones, you can even use your Dremel.